Hey folks, Winston for Carbide3D here. With the launch of both the new Nomad 3 and the Shapeoko Pro, we've been busy pushing these machines to their limits to find out just how much better they perform than their predecessors. These CNC machines feature some subtle and some major changes that will allow you to take more aggressive cuts and get more done faster. With these machines, we expect to see improvements in cutting speed of anywhere from 25 to 100%. In the following weeks, we'll be taking a look at some test cases with different machine and material combinations. Today though, let's take a look at the Shapeoko Pro cutting wood. But before we do that, I want to touch on our testing methodology. We've always aimed to provide users with a safe starting point for machining various materials. And as such, we want to start with some worst case assumptions. Those are, number one, that we're doing a full width of cut contour with the end mill pushing through fresh material with the entire frontal cross section, and number two, that we are not using fancy material entry strategies like ramping that you might find in more advanced programs like MeshCam Fusion 360 or something from Vectric. This gives us the highest confidence that the cutting recipes we come up with will work with any software with any kind of toolpath. So with those ground rules established, you might be asking, what is the easiest way to create a large amount of contour cuts? Is it drawing a bunch of random lines, maybe patterning a complex shape out several times? No, it's actually way simpler than that. Just draw a big ol' rectangle in Carbide Create and then apply a pocketing toolpath with a step over larger than the diameter of your selected end mill. You'll get a toolpath that sort of spirals out to fill the desired volume and doesn't cross over itself. It makes it super easy to create a test program, and that's going to be our protocol going forward. In this test, I'm trying out an Amana quarter inch down cutting end mill. The speeds and feeds guidelines from Amana for this tool suggest that it be used at 100 inches per minute and at a depth of cut equal to its diameter. But this recommendation is based on usage in sturdier, more industrial machines, so on the Shapeoko 3, I've always tended to go a little easier on the machine, usually by reducing the depth of cut by about 50%. With the Shapeoko Pro, however, there is no need to hold back. In this plywood test on the Shapeoko Pro, I am noticing zero drama at 100 inches per minute and a quarter inch depth of cut. The spindle is set to around 3 on the router dial or between 16 to 18,000 RPM. Machining wood always sounds a little bit shrieky, and that's just the nature of the material and the tooling, but I'm not hearing a periodic thrum or resonance in the cut, i.e. no chatter. In softwood and MDF, this is totally fine. In a hardwood like oak, this is probably about where I would leave it. But with this plywood, I think we can push it further. Here is the same cut at 1.25 times depth of cut, or 5 16 of an inch. I also increased the step over since the previous test was blowing through the thin walls left in the plywood. Verdict here? No problem. Let's try it again at 1.5 times depth of cut, or 3 eighths of an inch, and that's about as deep as I would want to go without compromising the integrity of this half inch plywood. And honestly, this looks and sounds totally fine. The router is starting to struggle a little bit, but the machine is holding up great. Personally, I wouldn't want to go any further than this, because if you're cutting through thicker material, chip evacuation can become problematic, especially with a down-cutting end mill. Deeper cut channels will tend to get packed with sawdust. And just because we can take such aggressive cuts doesn't mean we always should. There are some cases where maximizing depth of cut isn't good, namely in thin features like you saw with our first test. That cut was just too violent for the level of detail in that toolpath. In those cases, you can try reducing the depth of cut or feed rate, or reducing depth of cut and adding more feed rate. This is a balancing act that you're going to have to do based on your project. Take this pumpkin for example. Because of how fragile these thin features are, even with a generous sprinkling of tabs, I definitely don't want to overstress the material or blow out the corners, so I'm going to slash my depth of cut by half. By the way, this pumpkin is part of our seasonal vector collection, which is in beta, but you can register or log in to launch.carbide3d.com and then go to launch.carbide3d.com elements to download vectors that you can use in your own projects. And after a little cleanup with a Dremel and sandpaper, we have an easy decorative pumpkin. 
when you increase the performance and capabilities of a CNC, you start to have to balance factors like the strength of your cutter, or the structural integrity of your stock material, or the security of your work holding. We'll be using tests like the ones shown in this video to inform the speeds and feeds built into our tool database in Carbide Create, but a bit of human intuition will always be needed to achieve the best results. We hope this video gives you a better understanding of how we're conducting our testing, as well as a glimpse at the potential of the Shapeoko Pro platform to get your projects done faster. We'll continue to push our machines in the shop and share those results with you in the coming weeks. In the meantime, good luck and have fun machining, folks.